Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Moroz, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We started Bind Us Together back in March 2020 uh, when we were first on stay at home orders. Good morning, Jean. And uh, we began this because uh, we were feeling alone and isolated. And this was a way to remind us that we are not alone, that God is always with us, God is always loving us, and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So, uh, good morning and Welcome as we start another week. <laughs> uh, yesterday I had a, um, uh, for those of you who aren't part of Genesee Lutheran Parish, we had our annual meeting. So that's always a, you never know what's going to happen at an annual meeting. And this time it was via Zoom. So we really didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's uh, exciting, it, uh, ex exciting in quotation marks, you know, for uh, folks in the church who, you know, we've had these, um, the experience of, of years of certain way of doing things. It, it, it's been a bit of a grind to, to do things in a different way. So just saying. And um, this coming Sunday, for those of you who are members of Grace, is our uh, congregational meeting via Zoom. So I get um, bookended with annual meetings. And, you know, quite, quite honestly, what what um, was said at uh, Genesee's uh, annual meeting yesterday and I think the way that we're going to feel at Gen at uh, Grace's annual meeting is we are just grateful that we have made it, <laughs> that we made it through the year. And so, you know, God is good. We're here. So, woohoo. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, we uh, are heading in toward then the fourth Sunday um, after the Epiphany. And uh, the text that we're going to look at today is the first reading, the Old Testament reading, for this coming Sunday. <clears throat> and it is from Deuteronomy. It is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Here we go. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. So the me is Moses. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded, 
the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Okay. <laughs> so um, there's, there's a couple of different things to think about here. So first of all, why are we reading this particular uh, uh, reading from Deuteronomy on the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany? And Epiphany is all about revelation, right? Um, the, the Magi uh, came to Bethlehem um, so that the, um, the new king could be revealed to them was first revealed in the star and then uh, revealed in Bethlehem. So, um, so we read this because uh, our gospel reading that we'll, we'll get to um, on Sunday is about Jesus beginning his ministry. He is healing people. He's teaching with authority, and um, and people are trying to figure out who the heck he is. Um, and so, uh, with this reading, the the implication being, this is the prophet. Um, uh, we know that Jesus is more than a, a prophet, but uh, he was called a, a prophet. Um, throughout his ministry or questioned, is he the prophet? Um, so there's that aspect of it, how it folds into the season after the epiphany. He is revealed as a prophet. Jesus is revealed as a prophet to the people. Um, and then um, another aspect then to for us to look at with this reading is um, what is the purpose of a prophet and uh, who, who are prophets and who aren't prophets. So, sorry, I, there's, there's dust on my screen here. Um, We know we have a whole section of the Old Testament called the prophets. So we've got the major prophets and the minor prophets. Major prophets, their writings were really long. <laughs> and the minor prophets, their writings were short. That's the only difference between them. And so there were uh, these prophets then who have uh, over the history of Israel were accepted as speaking the word of the Lord. And so much so that they were included in the, the Hebrew canon. Um, so when, when I think of prophets, I, I think of, of that. Um, a lot of times uh, we, we talk about prophecy and prophecy is uh, predicting the future. And so uh, we, we think about that but as we read the different uh, prophets who are included in the Old Testament it it's not so much predicting the future that this is going to happen on this day or whatever but uh, the the prophets speak this is uh, this will be the um, consequences of your bad behavior. That's basically the, the work of the Old Testament prophets. Um, and there's all sorts of, of bad behavior that the prophets uh, talk about. Talk about. Um, and then there is always then within that, these are the consequences. This is what is going to happen to Israel because they were speaking to Israel, um, but then there is not always, always, but almost always in the prophets, the, the promise that uh, God is not going to abandon Israel, um, but 
there are consequences uh, to bad behavior and um, and but after those consequences uh, have you have experienced those consequences, then God's God's aban uh, steadfast love um, will always be there for you for the people of Israel um, that the the prophets were written to. So. Uh, we we get into a lot of of ideas about what prophecy is, and so we look at some of these books, and some of us are like, "Well, this is this means this, and this is happening here." And um, uh, good morning, Ellen. Yes, Ellen is en enjoying the snow, and I wore my my. Um, snow people uh, sweater today in honor of the snow. I've been waiting for snow because I, I love snow too. Uh, anyway, so um, but when we, we think about um, this particular verse or this particular section of scripture, so this is the end of Moses' ministry um he's coming to the end of his life he does not follow the the hebrew people into the promised land or he doesn't lead them into the promised land that's uh, joshua does that um and so uh the heading in my bible is a new prophet like moses so then that also changes the way we look at what a prophet is because Moses as prophet he was uh, he led the people but he was also a mouthpiece for for God so you know he went up to the mountain um, the clouds came down and his face was shining and God was speaking and God gave the Ten Commandments, um, gave the law to Moses and Moses took it down to the people who in the meantime were having a wild orgy with the golden calf, but that's another story for another day. Um, so when we think of a, a new prophet like Moses, basically, um, the, the people uh, were being promised a, a new leader um, and the leader would not only lead, but would hear, receive the word of God and um, pass it on to the people. So there again, there's a little different understanding of what a prophet is um, and Throughout the history of Israel, there were prophets, and you had the the uh, prophets who worked for the king, who told the king what the king wanted to hear, and then you had the other prophets who are now in the Bible who were saying, "Yeah, those prophets, they are not speaking the word of the Lord." Uh, this is the word of the Lord. You've been messing up, O oh king, and you are going to pay the consequences for your actions. Anyway, so I think it's important for us to keep in mind the our varying understandings of what a prophet is um, and, uh, and what it has meant throughout history. Um, and as Lutherans, we, we're not in the predicting the future kind of, of prophecy, but more along the lines of these are the consequences of your actions. This is what's going to happen if you don't shape up kind of, of prophets. Um, so, <laughs> all right, now we know about three different ways of thinking about uh, prophecy, but for this 
for this week, it's about the revelation of Jesus. And so Jesus is revealing himself through his teaching and his healing and uh, his, his ministry. So there you go. All right. So the hymn I picked uh, today, Word of God, Come Down on Earth. And this is um, uh, this is number uh, five ten in uh, the ELW, and I don't think that at Grace we've ever sung this. the The melody is familiar, but um, I I'm not sure because this isn't my office copy that has all the dates that we uh, sing the hymns in. Um, but anyway, so word of God come down on earth. Word of God come down on earth. Living rain from heaven descending. Touch our hearts and bring to birth faith and hope and love unending word almighty we revere you word made flesh we long to hear you i kind of like that <clears throat> definitely like the words all right so what are our prayer uh, concerns today? So I have a very special one. And uh, today is the first wedding anniversary of my son and my daughter-in-law. And so one year ago today, <laughs> before the pandemic began, we had a wedding. <laughs> Woo! That was because it originally had been planned for April 25th. Wouldn't have happened. Um, but because uh, Kim's mother uh, was diagnosed with lung cancer and she was not expected to live a whole lot uh, longer than April, uh, we decided, well, they decided, we all said, yay, uh, to move the wedding forward. So we had six weeks six weeks to plan a wedding and it was a darn good thing that we did <laughs> because we would not have had a wedding otherwise <sighs> so jean says that she doesn't think that uh um our saviors in clarkson has sung the hymn either you know there's you get into patterns and you um you sing the songs that you know over and over again and occasionally you need to break down and learn something new and and how old is this hymnal and we're still coming up with new ones so anyway <laughs> so uh uh blessings on their first anniversary okay and prayers for jim jim chandler um to get stronger all right i'm not sure a couple have such an eventful year as they had yes yeah um kim and doug it's been an interesting year uh kim's mom died in may i mean they had the wedding kim's mom died in may in quarantine uh and during the, the, the shutdown, which made it really difficult, um, though, since she was on the hospice, we could all go see her. Um, Kim lost her job the, when um, J.C. Penney's closed. And um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a year. It has been. Oh, and the pandemic. Minor detail. Minor detail. Any other prayer concerns this day? course we continue to pray um, for all who um, 
are suffering from uh, COVID-19, uh, for healing for those who are sick. Um, the numbers are going down, which is great, but we were at record highs. So we've got a way to go before we can um, uh, relax. Um, so uh, for the families of those who have died, and for those who will die this day, All right. Well, if you think of anything else, please go ahead and type it in. I'll bring it in at the end. And the Lord be with you. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. We have three family members of Flossie Henry who live in PA. Oh, they have COVID. Is that what you're telling us? Okay. All right. Thank you, Amy. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to come together, to share your word, to learn, to grow, and to pray together. Lord, uh, we give thanks on this day, the first wedding anniversary of Kim and Doug. And we ask that you bless them and keep them so that they can have many, 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 many more years together. We thank you that they survived this year that has been so rough um, and ask for uh, a wonderful celebration on this day. We lift up Jim Chandler uh, and pray for healing for him, uh, that he might uh, continue to get stronger. He's now uh, recovering in a care facility and can't uh, see his wife. And so Ethel, uh, we lift her up as well. They can only talk on the phone and we give thanks for the phone. We lift up all who um, are suffering from COVID-19 we especially lift up the three family members of Flossies in um, Pennsylvania. Uh, we pray that all who are uh, struggling with this virus um, will be healed. We lift up the family members of the over 400,000 in our country alone who have died. Uh, we ask for comfort for them and uh, help them in this difficult time when they, they can't even uh, gather to celebrate the life of their loved one. And we lift up those who will die this day. We pray that they might have your peace. Oh, Okay, Amy says, no, not COVID. One has a broken leg, one has cancer treatments, and one has a pinched nerve. All right, so I made an assumption and I was wrong. So we pray for the broken leg, for the cancer, cancer treatments, and for the pinched nerve that they might be healed. All of these things we lift up to you, Lord, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So my friends, thank you for being here today and um, may this be a beautiful, blessed day for you. For those of you out here, enjoy the, the snow, the little skiff of snow that we have. And remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.